Well, I've reached a point here where I need to do some reconfiguring of the hangar shop. Um, it's getting warmer here. It's the middle of June now. Out here in Arizona, it's gonna start getting warm. We've actually had a pretty mild early part of the summer so far. It's been nice. But uh, we're gonna be getting our 100 degree triple digit days here, which will persist until sometime in September. While I do have AC up here, I've got a three ton unit right there. It does pretty good, keeps this area right here workable. Uh, but when we get our days that are gonna be 117 degrees, uh, it's still gonna be, probably get up to you know, 95 in here in the hangar. And that's just a little warmer than I wanna work with. So um, what I'm gonna do is, and I designed the shop space and hangar for this purpose, I wanna move, I wanna roll these benches out of the shop I'm gonna roll my big workbench in here. I got about 25 feet this way, 15 feet this way. That workbench is 14 feet and a few inches, and it's, uh, I believe it's just under five feet wide. So I can roll that in here, close this door down like it is now, and this two-ton unit here can keep this, I can bring this down to 65 degrees if I wanted to, even on the hottest of days. I got really good insulation on these walls. I've got R, about R75, maybe even R100 on the exterior walls here. It's about 18 inches thick between the inside drywall to the outside, and it's full of insulation. This I can keep down real nice and cool, and purpose is I'm gonna do the wings. I'm at that point where I'm ready, I think, to start the wings. I'm going to reconfigure the shop space, get that big bench uh, rolled in here, of course get these out, and start uh, getting everything prepped to build a wing. Okay, I've got the main workbench placed in the shop space there. Roll these out here for now. I'm probably gonna do some rearranging here to make this space here a little bit of a better flow. Let's go have a look in here. I got about four feet clearance here, a little, just a tad under five feet from the wall to this edge and this edge to the door and just under four feet back there so I can very easily get around in here, no problem. The wing is 12 feet long. This is a 14 foot bench and it's uh, 57, almost six, uh, five feet wide. It's 57 inches wide. <clears throat> so should be perfect for working on the wing in here during the summer. Close this down, get the nice AC kicking in there. And these, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move these around a little bit and come up with a nice flow for this space here. Probably gonna move this over and do something with these. I can bring the fuselage over a little bit now because it's a little close to the wing tip right now. But there we go. Or maybe what I'll do is take the fuselage and roll it over here and put those benches over there. We'll see, I got options. But it's nice to see this in here. This is what the design was all about, was being able to reconfigure the shop and turn it into a different kind of a workspace very easily. I did this all by myself in about 30 minutes because everything is mobile. Move it around, piece of cake. Got it all leveled out. This table's within five hundredths of a degree from level anywhere you measure it. Start working on the flaps and ailerons. First thing I need to do is form the leading edges, just like I did on the uh, rudder and elevator skins. Do it the same way. Rotate it uh, with this tube here. I will need to make new fixtures. If you recall in previous videos when I did the rudder and elevator, I used a smaller diameter tube and the fixtures that I have uh, are too small for that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw those up, get those printed and get ready to form these pieces here. Got that drawn up and printing. If you may recall, I'll show you 
Here's one of my fixture blocks from the elevator and rudder. And I just took the same drawing and I just opened up this ID here from one and three eighths, which is what this was. Actually, it's a little bit heavy. Uh, opened it up to uh, 2.030, two inch 30 thousandths. That'll give me just a little bit of clearance on that uh, two inch aluminum tube. And now I'm just gonna let this thing print out. I'll print two of them. I'm just gonna put one on each end, just outside of the skins. And that should uh, facilitate some pretty easy bending, just like it did on the elevator and rudder. This thing's gonna run for about uh, three hours. Need to strike a center line down the bending tube here because I need to, that's what I need to follow all my holes with, make sure I keep everything nice and straight down the center of that tube. So I'm just using a piece of angle iron, setting the tube up in there. I'm gonna take my Sharpie, strike a line. Straight line all the way down the center of the tube. I'll bring this tube over to the skin there. And I'll leave enough room for my fixture to sit. My fixture is about one and a quarter inches wide, so I'll come in maybe one and a half. Put the edge of the skin there. Um, mark and drill this first hole, which will be, you know, let's just bring it over. I can explain it or I can just do it. I gotta be real careful in here. <laughs> so it's a much smaller space than where I've been working out there. I'll be breaking my glass or anything. So basically, I'll leave just enough room for my fixture to sit here. And that's the first hole I'm going to mark. Of course, it's upside down right now, but I'll flip it over, mark my first hole here. I'll come out to this end, mark and drill that hole, get everything clecoed in. And then all these holes here, I'll just drill and cleco those all the way down. I'm actually going to leave a little bit more. I, I, I forgot I need to have enough to grab onto this. I use a pipe wrench. I need to grab onto the pipe wrench here. My fixture will be here. The skin can start here. So that's about five inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark this and drill it. This tube is eighth inch wall. I decided to go fairly thick on that to reduce any flexing of the tube as I'm doing the rolling. So now I'll clico this in place. Then I'll come down to the other end and do the same. Get centered up right on my line. Make sure I don't have any bowing so it's good and tight. went through and just marked, just started to drill each of the holes. I didn't do every hole. I think I can get by with every other hole. I really don't believe I need this close of spacing during the bending. So um, what I'm going to do now is bring this over to my drill press. I'll jig up my V-block and set this in there and finish drill all of these marked holes here. Printed 
I've got them installed onto the table. I've got my tube ran through it. This end here. And uh, just like I did with the rudder and elevator, put a piece of brown paper under it. That way when I rotate this, I'm not gonna be dragging the aluminum on the table and scratching it. Paper will kind of pull with it. So this is ready to uh, roll form. I'll go ahead and get the camera up on the tripod here. Yeah, I believe the manual says to rotate this 270 degrees. Let's get it done. There's 270 degree rotation on the tube. Got the bend in there. Kind of feels like it's a little bit much, but that's what they said. I'm sure when I get it all taken apart, it'll all kind of spring out and be the right, uh, right amount. So now I'll go ahead and unscrew the uh, fixtures there and uh, take it out. I'm gonna be careful this time. If you remember on the previous video when I did the, I think it was the elevator, I unscrewed this and there's a little bit of energy stored in this skin, kind of as a spring, and that thing popped out. Be real careful this time and make sure I'm aware of that, but let's see what happens. coming and it still surprises me. There we go. Seems to have given me a real nice bend. Very easy to do. Certainly easier to do than what the method Rance tells you, which is just with two people grabbing the tube and trying to roll it. Um, I mean, that's how people have been doing it, I guess, but uh, this way is just so easy. You'll notice I didn't use a pipe wrench this time. Thought I'd try the strap wrench. It mostly worked. It, doesn't get a perfect good bite on it. I kind of had to help it by hand, but um, a pipe wrench would have worked probably just as well or better even. So there we go. That seems to have been just the right amount of bend. Um, that tube spar will go in there and I guess I'll check and see how the uh, ribs fit. Should get a pretty good fit here. Look at that. That's just perfect. I mean, I hardly, in fact, there's no preload on it at all. It just is that shape. So a two inch, two inch tube seems to do the trick. Again, eighth inch wall, good and heavy duty. So it's not gonna flex or very little flex in the middle as you're doing the forming. And my little jigs here, my little fixtures, makes this a very easy task. So while I'm set up for this, I'll go ahead and roll form the other three skins, finish out the ailerons and flaps, get those done, and then, um, then my roll forming is done, which is nice. Um, then I can get on to, I think what I'm gonna do is, is build the flaps and ailerons first, and then I'll get on to the actual uh, wings themselves. I've got the aileron up here now. I was gonna see if I was gonna get lucky enough to use the same holes in the tube 
and for two reasons I'm not. Reason number one, these holes are smaller. They're number 40s in the skin, and I've already drilled these to eighth inch. So that wouldn't work. And reason number two, which that could have been overcome by me drilling these first out to number 40, doing the ailerons first, then opening them up to 30 and doing the flaps. But I can't even do that because while they, at first appearance, look like they would line up, when I set up that hole and line it up, when I get down to the very end, it's off by about three eighths of an inch. So the hole spacing is just a few thousandths different between them. And then you end up with, um, you know, a cumulative stack up down there, you know, wrong spacing. I feel like they could have accounted for that in a little bit of a change in the design. If they made the flap, I'm sorry, if they made the aileron about an eighth of an inch longer and the flap an eighth of an inch shorter, I don't think it would affect any of the geometries for the way it's actuated or anything. Uh, they could have, they could have probably got the hole spacing the same. Honestly, it's not that great of a deal. It's just it'd have been nice to use the same tool. So no biggie. I'll just strike a new line and drill a new set of holes to number forty in this case, and um, well, we'll do it that way. It's no big deal. Got the flap hinges here, be four of them for this flap. This is the right hand flap. So this will be the root and that'll be the outboard end. And according to the manual, I'll need to press in the bronze bushings. And there is an orientation here. They're gonna be a set of lefts and rights for the left and right flap. And according to, in my manual, 6-16 figure, uh, the bushings, I'm sorry, the flanges of the bushings uh, are to be on the root side of the uh, flap. You can see here it says flap hinge. It's hard to make out, but it's there. Bronze flange bushings and the flange is in between the flap hinge and the, um, the hinge arm that comes off the wing. So that being the case, I'll come over here. And since this is the right flap, uh, these basically go kind of spaced out. Um, the way it's gonna go is I'll press the bushing on this side because it fits in that slot there. So bushing will be pressed in from this side on all of these pieces. I'll mark those and do that and then I'll come over here. It'll be the opposite on these for the right hand, uh, I'm sorry, the left hand flap. I'll mark those um, so that I press them in the right way. And then I believe I'll also be pressing in some bushings into these for the ailerons, but I'm gonna hold off on that since I'm just working on flaps. Don't wanna get too much going at one time here. Just using a dry erase paint marker. And I'm just marking the sides that I need to press into just so I don't get anything flipped when I go over to the Arbor Press. Here we 
go. Got all these done. They pressed in just fine. The manual did say to open these up to 5 16 these holes here for it. Um, but mine were already to size. So I, I mean, I ran a 5 16 drill through all of them and they all just went right through. So uh, they might've made a change where they uh, ream those or drill those to size or machine them to size since the manual was done. Um, so now uh, I've got this set here, this set here. I can proceed on to the next step. Manual says to draw a line two tenths of an inch up from the edge here of the ribs on the bottom. And what I found a great way to do that is I've got just a piece of uh, 062. Just lay my rib right there on it. And I take my Sharpie. Come across. It's real close. It's uh, it's within a couple thousandths. I don't know if you can see. I'm, actually, it's it's dead on the money. Two hundred thousandths, and uh, that works good. So, just a nice, quick way to do that. The manual is saying now to Clico the ribs in place. And I believe there should be an extra step in here um, before that. I need, to, I need to rivet the hinges in place as well as the push-pull tube attach or control horn, I would call it, uh, on the middle section there. Those have to be basically these, these assemblies here have to be prefabricated um, before I can rivet or uh, Clico the ribs in place. And I, I didn't see that anywhere in here. So um, I guess I'll do that. Get all these done and then I'll go ahead and Clico all these ribs in place to the top side of the skin. Something I'm noticing here as I'm looking is they show placing the rivet in this way through the hinge and then into the skin. Um, now, I don't know how much it really matters, but I've always understood that if possible, when you can, you would want the flange side or the factory side of the rivet to be on the thinnest material that you're joining. One thing I'm noticing here in the manual is the orientation in which they have you riveting this assembly together. They're showing the the, the flange head, the flange side of the rivet, to go against the thicker material, in this case the hinge, and then the shop side, or I believe they call the secondary side of the rivet, against the thin material. And I've always known it to be the other way around. When you can, when you have access, uh, to, it's preferred to go this way, where you've got the primary side or the flange side of the pop rivet on the thin material side, and then the part that squeezes out goes against the thicker side. And they have it backwards here, and I can't see any reason why it couldn't be what I would say is the correct way. There's, I don't think there's anything in here that's gonna be interfering. It's all just open in there. Um, and to confirm that, I, I came over here and looked at the guidelines here for rivets, and sure enough, it says right here, um, where possible, set the secondary head against the thicker and therefore stronger material. And then they show you here, it's satisfactory to do it this way, the way Rands is showing you. Um, it would be better or it'd be good if you used a backup washer, but here's the better way to do it, where the thinner material gets the primary side of the, of the head. So um, this is what I'm gonna do, and I'm not quite sure why they did it that way. I might find out something later, but I really don't think so. Like I say, it's, there's nothing interfering in there. So this is the way I'm gonna do it. This I believe is the correct way.
One thing I did notice about the orientation of the rivets on the center section here, where the control cable comes in. If you look here, I was looking at this. I, I did only two rivets on this one because I wasn't sure if I was going to have to drill them out. And I do notice that the back side or the secondary side of the rivet head does come, boy, almost exactly to the middle, possibly even a little past. So I thought, well, that's that could content, potentially cause a uh, an interaction there. And I can see that's where a reason why you would want to flip the rivets around. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm actually going to alternate the two. So on those two, I'm going to run this way. And then I'll run the rivets in this direction on this side, do the reverse there. And that way, I'll get the clearance I need. And still have maybe a little bit of a better orientation on the rivets. Again, <laughs> this probably isn't really entirely important, but I don't know. That's what I'm doing. Here's a better example of that. So they're gonna go about like so. And now I'll, I'll definitely have clearance. And I'll do the opposite for these two and these two. Got the flap flipped upside down, setting on my extrusions. And now on this last hinge, I will go ahead and rivet it this way with the primary side against the hinge, uh, just so I don't have that extra tail of the rivet hanging way off the, the hinge there. I'm going to end this episode here and we're going to carry on with part two of the flaps and ailerons on the next episode. Thanks for watching.